Buenas noches y bienvenido a la Orange and Black Soccer Cast. Esta es la podcast de campeones. Nah, I'm just kidding. This is actually is not yet a Spanish language podcast, and I would certainly not rely on myself to uh, run that show. But let's get right to things. Um, from Las Vegas, from Sin City, Mr. Brad Polanski, how's it going? It's going well. And you know what? I know you did that because Orange County is now on, was on uh, TUDN, was the first, one of the first teams with the new league's uh working uh collaboration with the spanish speaking network so you know what kudos to you and in typical ray fashion i learned something today and if we do that segment i'll share it uh later on wonderful um we've got one other guest with us and he comes from a place that we've never had a guest on from before this is michael betts from are you in indianapolis is that fair maybe you're in a suburb somewhere Technically a suburb, but just call it Indy. Well, good enough. Michael, welcome to the Orange and Black Soccer Cast. Thank you guys for having me. Um, we'll just start with you. This is exciting for us, um, and I am out of Spanish to speak, I believe. So tell us about Indy's year thus far. You guys are in the Eastern Conference. It's like an entirely different universe as far as we're concerned. That would be the best way to put it. Um it's been an interesting season, no doubt. Um, you know, last season we had um, Mark Lowry as our coach, and since then Mark has left. We brought in Sean McCauley from uh, Portland. Or no, sorry, Minnesota. Um, he had spent time in Portland before that. But it's gone completely differently than I could have thought. Um, when we broke down the season at the beginning of the year, we said playoffs would be – you know, kind of that expectation getting there last year, but you know, now we're on the third best winning streak in the league. We're tied for second in the East, and it's uh, it's been a lot of fun to be a part of and to watch and be able to cheer on a team that has had a lot going on for the uh, past couple of months. Uh, we're almost to the halfway point of the season so far. Michael, who's Indy 11's kind of standout performer at this point? There's two, uh, really three guys I would point to, um, and each one has a different role. Um, as far as scoring goals, without a doubt, Jack Blake. Um, a guy that we had last year under Mark Lowry has completely taken a completely different role uh, with Sean McCauley's team. As you can see, he's scoring goals left and right. He's playing defense very well. Um, I equate it to the Ted Lasso chant. He's here. He's there. He's everywhere. He's Jack Blake. Um, the other guy, offensively, who's now leading the league, or yeah, leading the league in assist, and has now reached the top of the um, history books for Indy 11s, Aiden Stanley. Um, 10 assists on the year so far. He's been absolutely outstanding for us since coming in from Miami. Um, and the other guy who doesn't get much love, but he absolutely deserves it, is Hunter Solt. We brought him in a couple of weeks into the season to be a backup guy for Yannick Odell. Um, and then that first three and eight that we had with the Open Cup, he stepped up in Colorado, and it's been his job ever since. And I've I've dreaded the day that Portland decides to bring him back off of loan. Um, but man, he has just been a difference maker for that back line recently. Um, to talk a little bit more about Jack Blake for a minute, he's obviously a little more familiar to Orange County fans. Plenty of time uh, in Salt Lake, uh, technically Sandy. Plenty of time uh, in San Diego. Um, you're kind of getting him at his prime, and I actually didn't realize this. He's eight goals from 15 matches. Um, is he the key player? Is it is everything going through Jack Blake, or is he the one that's kind of arriving late in the box and, and finishing off moves? I say it's a bit of both. Um, Jack really shores up a midfield that um, at moments looks a little bit shaky. 
but um, you know, a lot of it has, a lot of those goals have been from uh, penalties. We have, I think, five or six awarded penalties. He's taken every single one of them, and he's made every single one of them. But it's the quality that he shows within the box, and we saw it um, two weekends ago against Birmingham, that opens the door for uh, Sebastian Guanzotti and Augie Williams and all the other offensive firepower that Indy's managed to pick up over the offseason. Um, Jack Lake has really kind of been able to assist those guys getting everywhere and um, really opened up the offensive game for Sean's team. Awesome. Awesome. So a couple questions that I have for you. Uh, obviously right now, Indy 11 is on an extremely good uh, run of form. What's that? Uh, eight, nine games in a row, 10. I don't even know how to count anymore. Um it- a very, very long run of form. What's been the success to that? Has it been more offensively minded or defensively minded uh, out of Indy? And, you know, where is the strength in this team, really? As far as numbers go, um, streak-wise, it depends on what streak you're looking at. Um, if you're looking at all competitions, it's 10 wins in a row, 12 undefeated. Um, if you're looking at just club play, it's eight wins in a row, 10 undefeated. But really, it's kind of been a mix of both. Uh, um, you know, we've seen games like the Hartford game at home where it's 4-1. And we have seen a game like San Antonio this past weekend where it was 1-0. You know, we've we've seen the offensive firepower, and then we've seen the defensive steadiness. And I think it's been a mix of both. Um, and on the, the games where the offense hasn't necessarily been there, the defense has. And when the defense has shown some shakiness, the offense have been there. Um, you know, we've talked about it a couple times on Cue the Smoke where we don't think it's a player situation. We think it's Sean has brought in a very, very good system and the players are buying into it. And I think that's the biggest thing that we lacked the last couple of years is, is a belief in a system and trusting everyone to do their jobs and to play the way we've been playing has been absolutely phenomenal. All right. So I was going to save this later, but I saw that uh, our manager, our podcast background producer, Andy put it on. Can you put that question back up on the screen, Andy from uh, DK Jenks? So it's been no secret. The kind of next big, spot where we've seen a lot of the MLS uh, pop up has been Indy. Can you kind of give, because we, we're familiar with it down in Orange County, can you kind of give a little bit of what's been happening behind the scenes there and what you guys know about the, you know, the status of the stadium fight with the city? Oh, boy. Um, 11 Park has been a thing as long as the team's been around. Um, you know, it was always the goal of the Indy 11 ownership to build a stadium in Indianapolis to um, not just harbor the sport of soccer, but to try to get um, eventually to the MLS. Um, as of late, there was some land purchased by the ownership to start building. Um, since then, we've run into a bit of an issue. Um, the previous ownership of the building had built their um, entire foundation on what used to be a public cemetery, um, and they did not dispose of the bodies correctly. So that is something that the Indy 11 has now had to take on um, and try to figure out. There's been a lot of other things going on with that. Um, Recently with the mayor trying to get um, an MLS team in with different investors, that's been a whole saga uh, since really May, but it's something that has really kind of seen the fans come together and the team has truly come together around it. So as much as it's a struggle to deal with it and have it kind of exist in our lives, it's something that's kind of brought the team together and it's worked. You know, they've been playing well. So 11 Park was supposed to be built 
by 2025. Um, it would have opened with the Super League team um, when they would be inducted next season, and then the following season, the Indy 11 men would be back there. Um, when that's going to get built, that's kind of the question, but we'll see. All right, and one quick follow-up before I jump back over to the uh, upcoming game itself. Um, what has, you know, I know that you said in our pre-show that you were semi-affiliated with uh, Brickyard Battalion, the supporters group there. Uh, what's kind of been the the discussions behind the scenes with Brickyard Battalion and any movements about uh, kind of combating that with the city? It is something that I give full prop to uh, the BYB president, David Zimba, and the entirety of the BYB uh, board. They have guided us through waters that have been very, very tough, um, and they've done an excellent job with it. They've been very open and apparent, not just with um, members of the city county council and the mayor's office, but also with us. Um, and that was my biggest thing was um, David made it very clear where the BYB stance was, and that is to um, grow soccer in the city of Indianapolis, but to do it under the Indy 11 banner. Um, a large part of why the Indy 11 came to Indy was because of the Brickyard Battalion and the support that they had before the team was here. Um, so a lot of the board members who have been here since uh, inception of the team have very plainly said, Yes, we want to grow soccer here in Indianapolis. Yes, we want to possibly see an MLS team come here. But it wants, they want to do it the right way, and they truly want to see the Indy 11 crest move that direction too. All right. And, you know, I really appreciate that. I mean, given we all kind of know what that's like, you know, from the people on the ground who go to city hall meetings who really fight on the ground, you know, we can definitely sympathize from the orange and black soccer cast and orange County as a whole, uh, back with one more question for this upcoming game this weekend. Uh, if orange County is to get a result from this game, uh, which I don't see necessarily happening, how would they do it? Like where is the Achilles heel of this India team? Recently there hasn't been one. Um, to be very frank with it, there hasn't really been one. Um, you look kind of back to the first couple of games. Um, you look at the 5-3 loss against Louisville, the 4-2 loss against Charleston. The big killer in those games was a lack of communication within the box, um, both on just every day, every you know, run-of-the-mill plays, but also from set pieces. Um, and counterattacks. Recently, the back line has shored up, and a lot of it has been in large part thanks to um, Ben Mines and um, Ben Afemu, who he brought in a couple of months ago on a tr uh, trade deal with Miami. But also, it's become Hunter Salt's back line. You know, he has truly um, stepped up in the box, and he's shown that even at a young age, he can truly. Um, play well. I mean, we saw it Saturday, you know, we had save and save and save. And that's without talking about the fact that he saved the penalty in the first 30 minutes of play. Um, there are still moments where a quick counterattack when, uh, in this case, Orange County, if they were able to get a quick counterattack with all their players up, has caused a little, little bit of trouble. Um, but it's it's really when the lack of communication comes from the back line and the midfield and the goalkeeper that um, would be the Achilles heel. And right now, the communication's there. But I don't know if anyone's looked at the forecast, but it's supposed to be like very high 90s on a turf pitch in the middle of nothing but concrete. It's going to be hotter than normal. Communication might be struggling a bit as it gets later into the game with the heat and all that. So. That would be the big part would be, um, you know, it would be the counterattack, some set pieces, but really it comes down to whether or not the defensive side of the team has communication or not. 
Well, uh, we've got a comment from Jason from Indianapolis uh, in the chat about um, Ben Mines being a wingback, which makes me, having not watched a single moment of Indy 11, because I'm a podcast professional here, <laughs> are you playing three at the back if Ben Mines is, is a wingback? That's kind of been the uh, plan recently. Um, it's kind of been a mix of a back three, but really since um, the Ofemu and Mines trade, we've rolled with the back three because, um, you know, with Mines' ability to get up and get players in the box and get Aiden Stanley up in the box, um, those guys, as offensive as they are, they still have an exceptional ability to get back, much like Jack Blake and Cam Lindley. So we've been running a three at the back, but there were times you couldn't tell. Got it. Uh, hey, uh, the West, the Western Conference, the Western Conference, it's all about vibes out here. Formations are secondary to vibes, so we're familiar. A um, couple quick questions for you. Uh, who's winning this match and by what scoreline? And uh, who's going to be your man of the match, Michael? Oh, God, I'm horrible at predictions. I will say that now. Um, this is a matchup that if it was an Eastern Conference team, I would have no questions. Um, an Eastern Conference team below us at this point, I'd have really no questions. But there's something about Western Conference teams, whether it's we go to them or they come here, that India seemed to struggle with. We haven't seen as much with Sean. But in past years, we saw it. Um, you know, normally on Cue the Smoke, we look at the head to heads. That doesn't really say anything. You know, it was a 3 1 win at home for Indy and a 1 0 win at home for Orange County last year. But both teams have changed. You know, Indy's had a coaching change and a completely entire renovation of the roster. So I think it's something that if performance stays well, Indy will continue to put goals in the back of the net. Um, to what extent? That's a great question. This could easily be a 2-0 win, a 1-0 win, anywhere in there. But it's really, again, going to come down to how can the defense step up for us. Um, I think Indy does come away with this one just because of the recent performances. Maybe I'm a little bit biased. Who's to say? And again, the man of the mask kind of depends on how the game goes, right? If it's a very defensive game, it would not at all shock me to say Aiden Stanley is the guy who um, would be the guy who, yes, he's been offensively exceptional, but defensively Aiden has been there too. So overall, probably him. But this could be a game where all of a sudden, Augie Williams has five goals in a game, you know. But really, it's it's really been Augie Williams scoring, but because of stuff that Aiden Stanley, Jack Blake, and Cam Lindley do. So Lindley, Blake, Stanley, any of those three guys, it wouldn't shock me at all to see be man of the match for that one. Got it. Um, another comment from... Uh, Jason, I realize that your team has uh, Aiden and Aiden, and neither of those are spelled the way that you think they're spelled. Um, Michael, you plugged it a couple minutes back. Please, uh, first off, thank you for joining us. Second, where can we find you on the internet if we are so inclined? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, thank you guys for having me. Um, it's always great to see other um, podcasts from other teams kind of reach out to to us and um, ask if we want to do it because not only does it um, give us a little bit more closure, it gives us a chance to sit down and talk uh, the sport we love. Me personally, um, on Twitter, at bets underscore IXI. IXI is fairly simple. Last name, B-E-T-Z. As far as what I've been plugging for most of the night, um, we have a podcast here in Indy. Um, for the Indy 11, both men's and women's, kind of a by fans for things type, by fans for fans type deal. Um, and that's as it's up on screen at Cue the Smoke. Um, that's here on Twitter, not here on Twitter. That's on X, 
Twitter, whatever you want to call it now. Um, we're on Facebook at Q the Smoke Podcast, and then wherever you find podcasts. Um, normally, it's kind of been a four per month, two for the men, two for the women. But um, that's where we talk all things indie and um, air any complaints we have with the team. I support a year-round airing of grievances. For those of you listening along and you're curious, it is Q, like hinting or signaling for something to do and not what British people do as a national pastime. Um, so that would be C-U-E-T-H-E-S-M-O-K-E and not Q-U-E-U-E. Um, Michael, thank you so much. And uh, well, I hope we get all the points this weekend. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Um, Brad, can you can you give us a prediction for this match? What what's what's going to happen? Yeah, uh, you know I'm going to do the Ray approach and uh, give a number based totally off of illogicy and the fallacies. Uh, and that is my dog Wendy barked twice during that whole segment, and therefore it's going to be a two zero victory for Indy Eleven because I do not see a world in which we put goals on Indy. I'm going 3-1 because Stranger Things have happened, and I think we can uh, maybe punish them from a set piece. I see that DK agrees. Um, if anyone else has predictions, throw them in here, and then we can publicly shame you if it goes uh, well or poorly at the weekend based on what you want. Um, I don't know if it's fair to either of you, but do we have the season score prediction scoreboard handy at this minute? Yeah, I have it. There it is. Uh, just okay. really quickly going to run through it. Um, right now, all that changed was Taylor, myself, and Andy scored more points. I just realized Andy is now tied with me. Um, so I need to update that to be both of us are silvers. Um, other than that, everyone's predicting we're somehow going to be winning games, and we haven't been. So I think that segues into our real quick breakdown of last week's game yeah let's talk about it uh if you missed it orange county didn't win um for a brief moment maybe it seemed like we were going to win um actually for a brief moment it seemed like bryce jameson said okay i will drag 10 of you across this field kicking and screaming and i'll do it all myself unfortunately uh despite his brace not enough for orange county due to some questionable poor i'll put poor defending that could have been better uh and they conceded four so brad what went wrong it's got to be a lack of youth a lack of death here um i want to just do a quick you know sophie and jafal he is no longer with the team we don't know the reason why but missing him in the midfield there was absolutely massive um, definitely would have helped see the game over the line. Any amount of depth there. Uh, you know, we just signed a new player to a 25 day contract, Jordan Chavez, and he's seeing minutes. You know, that's kind of where we are. This team and really Bryce Jamison this past week had an absolute, you know, Bryce Jamison had an absolute just classic game showing all the talent he has. Um, and unfortunately, you know, like you said, some questionable questionable defending leads to a couple of late goals, uh, an absolute breakdown past 80th minute, and that's just where we that's just where we are. Um, I've had this thought for a couple of weeks now, but I think this result was maybe the one that had me wanting to say this. Do we have to maybe change our expectations for what the season is going to bring? I think we should reframe but not change the expectations. Uh, just recalling very early on in the season, I think half of us were saying hosting a playoff game, so a top four finish was an expectation. Uh, the other half of us were saying playoffs were an expectation. And given how we've been performing over the last couple of weeks, I want to say that we're not a playoff team, but given kind of the absolute ram shot middle of the road you know we're still two points off of fourth place i think playoffs still are a very reasonable expectation and hopefully you know 
we get some players back healthy. Because uh, I think what we've seen, especially in this game, Orange County can compete in games. We're just having issues closing out. I really do think this was one of our better games as a midfield, uh, producing some opportunities, mostly in the second half uh, with Bryce Jameson. Whatever pep top was given um, definitely helped. I think Ryan Flood, the two games he's played with us this so far this season, have also just been pretty good uh, contributing off of that right back position in this case. Um to, to correct you, he was definitely playing as a left-sided center back, right. left, but left he possesses the longest throw on the yeah. team. Yeah, sorry, the um, bread and bomb position. Um, and then finally, I know that uh, we kind of already have seen the first goal in the highlights, but just a huge shout out to Ashish Chada, who put his body on the line to produce a absolute banger of an assist. I think this game so far this season has produced the goal of the year and the assist of the year and four or five months from now we're not going to be debating that still i i'm inclined to agree with you and i'm really glad that he didn't get hurt um it's been mentioned a couple times i think we kind of beat around it a few times uh, at one point when you look at bryce jameson scores first goal and it cuts to the bench huge shout out to producer andy for pointing this out to everybody You'll also see it here. It's a bunch of um, literal children uh, and a dude that's on a contract that is less than one month long. And then, you know, technical staff. So, uh, yeah, we're a bad team right now. We have absolutely no depth. We have a on loan attacking fullback playing as a center back. Things aren't maybe going super well. Um, we just have all these players that are out injured and so i think i've seen some of the criticism and definitely not a lot of it thankfully not being chronically online at this point but uh, i don't think this is a situation where you fire the coach and expect things to improve uh, we have to get players that are back fit but i do have to wonder what's happening because i this can't just be bad luck at this point if like half of our team isn't fit um and and brad maybe you could speak more to um Maybe being calm in a moment like this and not calling for the manager's head, unless he's the one who is um, not marking and putting in bad tackles. Sorry. So your question was: Are we? Are we? What are we doing with the managerial position right now? No, I think my question is: Is everything okay? It, it, because we're not fit. You know, I think where we are right now is. Everything is okay until kind of the 70th, 80th minute of the game. Um, I think especially the last couple of weeks, the team we've put out has been competitive. Uh, but the team that we end games with is in, like producer Andy, like you said, a bunch of literal children with Ryan Dogman um, and a guy on a 25-day contract plus technical staff. There is really no depth with this team right now. And you're, see you're seeing that kind of just with the end result. Um, a couple of questionable defensive plays led to three more goals, the tying goal and the uh, next two goals. Uh, you know, can't really pin it all down on one person, unfortunately. But, you know, it's a heartbreaking way to end a game. It is. Um, in a happier note, I will pin all of Orange County's success on one person this past weekend. And I am ever so, so happy to bring him onto the show. Bryce Jameson, welcome to the Orange and Black Soccer Guest. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. We are very excited to have you on. Um, Bryce... Tell us about this weekend, uh, popping off the brace and popping off with an absolute banger as well. Uh, well, disappointing result after, of course, going up in the first place. But uh, it was good. I was happy to get two goals. So, yeah. Um, you looked like you couldn't quite believe that your first goal went in. Um, at least that's what your celebration led us all to believe. So what's running through your mind as you square this one off your chest and uh, hit it goalwards? Honestly, what was going through my mind, I seen it, and I was like, ain't no way that just went in. Like, 
Like, no chance. And then I was like, because first of all, I was surprised that I scored. And then the way I scored. And I was like, yo, why was that like, that was actually good. <laughs> so, like, that was that was my reaction. <laughs> uh, we love it. And uh, hopefully it's hopefully it's set in as a real result. Um, Brad, ask away, my friend. Yeah, so I got a couple questions for you, uh, Bryce. So you guys, you were with the Academy team last year for, I want to say, most of the season. And you guys made it to the finals of the uh, USL Academy uh, Championships. What was that experience like? And, you know, just playing for the uh, Orange County Academy team last year that really had a phenomenal season. I enjoyed the season. Playing games with them was... I, of course, I'd rather play with the first team, but playing with them, it's still fun, and I still enjoy to play, and I have friends on that team. So it's really, it really makes me more excited and energetic to play with them and especially win games. That really, that also feels really good. And in the playoffs, it was a, it was a blast. Of course, we ended up not winning, which isn't isn't my favorite thing in the world, but... So I'm glad that we went out there and we played well, had great moments, had a good time, and just didn't get the results, sadly enough, but I still had a I still had a good time. Awesome, Bryce. So, you know, I'll ask one more thing about the Academy team, kind of kind of segueing to where you currently are in your career. Um, you know, obviously you're still young. Uh the Academy team, how did it how did it prepare you for the opportunity that you're in now with the uh, first team? And did you feel like, you know, your experience there kind of led you? Cause you're having what I would argue is a pretty good out, you know, outcoming season for orange County. You have three goals on the year and you've definitely made your mark so far this season. Uh, how'd the Academy team kind of do that for you? Well, with the Academy it's different than other it's different than other like MLS Next Academies or or just soccer academies local because it's actually close to like a first team. Like I was at Barca and I wasn't really close to the first team there at all because I was also in Arizona. But it also had like USL Academy, I think it's good because it can build up to getting it can build you up to getting to pro. And OC has us close to the first team and has some of the academy kids close with the first team, which actually helps them, like, just develop into a pro and really get that mindset. And being so close and just in the same proximity just helps as well. Like, I see the academy kids all day. And I, and some of them train with us as well. So, yeah, it just, it just helps get, it just helps you get better being in that environment. Awesome. So next question for you, you know, I like to ask this, especially of the younger players, who do you model your game off of? And it can be either Orange County player, another teammate of yours, or just any player in the world. Who does Bryce Jamison kind of build his game off of? Um, I'd say I have a unique and unpredictable game to where it's like I don't really model it off of other wingers or other players. I definitely do take bits and pieces off of higher level wingers and things that I see like that I'll see and be like, oh I, I should try that or oh I want to do that. And but like as it if uh, for somebody that I look up to for somebody that I look up to I wouldn't say that I base my game off of anybody because I I I have a interesting way of playing and it's not like it's not it doesn't mirror anybody that I know at least I don't think so. You know, I actually like that answer a lot, Bryce. Uh, and finally, you know, kind of just peeping back down the pipeline for upcoming talent. We've had Kobe Henry, we've had Bryce Jameson. Who's the next next wave member that we should be looking out for? You know them a lot better than we do and we can't wait to see you know which one of your friends is going to come up next and who's going to be that next breakout star benjamin barzolo 
Benjamin Barzolo. Oh my goodness. That guy is talented for real. Once he gets that, oh, once he gets like the hang of everything around here and starts getting comfortable, oh, it's over. And he's mm, young and he's going to, once he like actually starts getting, just getting the hang of it and really taking in what's all around him and like using that to his, to his advantage. Oh, he's going to, he's going to be disgusting. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Cause I I what we both live in Atlanta, so I play I play back with him uh sorry. Looks like Bryce is yeah, you good? Say that again. You know, I told him do not cross on the construction site. So we'll let him get off really quick while someone yells at him because just Orange County things. Uh and you know, why not? Um, Brad, peep it down the pipeline. Brennan Parjolo, probably the next big thing. And if you're watching live, this is a time to get your questions in. Um, do you agree with that? Are you a Joe Buckley? Where you at? Um, you know, just quickly going to answer that question. I'm super excited for uh, Ben, you know, just based on Bryce's opinion there. I really do you see Joey Buckley as another member who's going to contribute? But I mean, how can how can you argue with such like a a wonderful uh, what's the word I'm looking for? recommend not recommendation just glowing a, a review from Mr. Bryce Jameson? Yeah, um, Bryce, I'm going to live here in the moment with you, and I hope you're being left alone now. Um, you're scoring braces, you're scoring goals, you're damaging other teams. I'm here for it. Uh, I think everybody else is here for it. We're team Bryce Jameson right now. Um, we're going to throw some quick fire questions for you really quickly. Um, and as well, congratulations on graduating high school, which is an insane thing to think about. Um, Thank that you. you are, uh, I mean, scoring braces and, and just finishing high school is, I wasn't doing anything at your age and uh, still not. So I can't wait to see what you're doing. <laughs> Um, Bryce, uh, really quickly, uh, favorite player growing up? Favorite player? Paul Pogba. Okay. Uh, dream club to play for? Manchester United. Oh, not Orange County. Interesting. Um, what is your favorite soccer memory? <laughs> uh, my favorite soccer memory. Oh, it was when I was in Atlanta, U15. Scored two back to back, one volley, one half volley, same game against Columbus. Everybody went crazy. It was wild. So yeah, probably that. Nice. Um, who was the most impactful person in your development with soccer? Uh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I should have specified. Um. I think it was my my U my U eleven coach Joey Coach Joey. He before that I just I just started playing soccer when I was ten, and then I was at a different team, and then he seen me, and he he was the one who really sat me down and like really took me through soccer and practice and just teaching me stuff. Cause when I first started the team that I was at, they would just tell me, Oh, run, kick the ball. Like they didn't really teach me much, but Joey, he really like, he really went, took me through the basics, even though like I didn't know it. And the people around me, since they were already playing for a while, they already knew all that stuff, but he really like just took the time and helped me out a lot. So that was when I first like really got into it. Well, uh, massive credit to him and uh, massive credit yourself for coming quite a ways in eight years. Um, Bryce, I heard you recently were recognized out and about at the Spectrum. Um, is that your favorite place to hang out in Orange County? Where is your favorite place to hang out in Orange County? Where did you get that information? We have sources. I'm not at liberty to share. Of course. Always. Yeah. Um, is that my favorite place to hang out? Nah. 
nah i used to go there a lot not not a lot but i used to go there when i first moved out here but like now not really not really my favorite place to hang out here here maybe the beach i guess i don't really go there much but that's i don't really go out much but if anything like the beach with my friends anywhere with my friends to be honest if i'm with my friends i'll have a good time fair enough um one final kind of or two two final quick fire questions for you uh, who has the worst music taste in the locker room at orange county ashton miles Ooh. um is seth kasipley a close second Nah, he has variety, so I don't I don't mind it. <laughs> and then um okay, two more questions for you. What's your favorite vegetable, Bryce? Asparagus. Oh ooh, good shout. Yeah. Finally, um U seventeen World Cup. Can you just tell us about what it was like to represent your country and what it was like uh to walk out and what it was like to play? Uh it was really just a blessing to be there. The whole experience was amazing. Walking out of the tunnel during the first game really hit me different. Like being there at first, it was like, oh shoot, like this is sick. But like walking out of the tunnel, that's when it really hit me. And I was like, yo, like this is like, this is something else. And like, this is, this is a different feeling. So that was just like, I was just thankful and blessed to be there. Uh, it seems well-deserved. Um, we've got a couple of fan questions I want to fire out and then we'll let you to go. All right. Okay. Um, who wins the Euros? <laughs> Who wins the Euros? Uh, I don't know. Probably know, maybe Germany, I guess I'll say. Ooh, a bit of a dark horse. I like it. Um, Who has been the best mentor while you've been at Orange County? While I've been at Orange County. I can't pick one single person, to be honest. Like, everybody's taught me all their little different things. Everybody's different. Everybody plays different. Definitely, I've spent the most time with Paul, Coach Paul. He really helps us younger guys a lot, and he's always, like, in and around the academy and always teaching us different things. But definitely all the players are always helping me, always looking out for me and trying to teach me and just help me develop All right, Bryce, uh, I'm done pestering you. I promise. Um, thank you for coming on tonight. Uh, would you like to plug your social media or anything? Uh, no, nah, it's okay. Thanks. <laughs> All righty. Um, that's your winger and brace score at the weekend. Bryce Jameson, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Bryce. All right. Um, I feel almost mean i felt like i just asked him so many questions but i do like that he threw ash and miles under the bus immediately and i do like that he threw some asparagus talk down i think asparagus is definitely an underrated vegetable uh if there was one you know it's so many ways you can do it you can do it healthy you can air fry it, you can put it in the oven or you can bake and wrap it um so i wonder which way Bryce Jameson really likes his asparagus, but I'm sure someone will dig up that information at a game in the future. Yeah, and then we'll get to ask him about it on the show, and he'll ask, where did you find out about that? And I'll feel terrible about myself inside for a good 90 seconds. Um, Why? You're channeling your inner nerd war, nerd war, if you know who that is, and it was an impressive moment that you were able to play it off so coolly. Thanks. I uh, embarrass myself a lot on the show, and so it uh, comes with a lot of experience. Um, Brad, would you like to update us on our playing for pride thing? And if you yeah. have picked Bryce Jameson this past weekend, oh boy, I'm sure you are probably now leading. Yeah, uh, and in fact, you are correct. The current leader, Mr. Chris, sorry, Carlos, uh, has Bryce Jameson on his team. I think Chris T also does, but and I'm sure producer Andrew can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I believe he also has a Mr. Colin Shuttler, who, with allowing four goals with two saves and a start, ended up with negative three points. It's, I think, the second or third time a player has ever ended negative in a uh, Orange County soccer game. 
And I think it's only exclusive to goalies just due to the way we uh, do points up here. So Carlos is in first with a commanding four-point lead over second place Chris, who is two points ahead of myself, the highest-ranked uh, Orange and Black Soccer Cast member, with two games left in the month. Um, other members of note, Ray is sitting down with 36, um, producer Andy with 32, and you're way down there, Dylan. I'm sorry to do this to you uh, with a 24-point total so far this season. I am very much used to coming towards the bottom of this one. Larry's actually doing worse than me. He's on 22, so take that, buddy. Um, I will take a not last place as of much course. as I can. Of course, and uh, just a quick shout out for rules. I am not going to make uh, Mr. Jordan Chavez our 25 day uh, member available. Um, and if you did have Sophie and Jafal, uh, we're treating his absence for the rest of the year kind of like you would a season ending injury. He's no longer with the team and kind of giving a little bit of a what not the word it, anything can happen and it's just kind of the risk you take when you pick any player uh injuries happen roster moves happen it just that's what it is there it is remember this is all for a good cause and uh we're happy as ever to be supporting athlete ally and you can find all of their stuff at athleteally.org um i believe that about wraps it up for tonight which leads us into everyone's favorite except for our producer uh segment is that correct brad do you have anything else that we've missed no i'm ready Great. for random thoughts yeah well we'll do a we'll do a little subtle nod to ray really quickly what'd you learn on, on this well, episode you know i alluded to it earlier this week as i grabbed my lovely dog who was just sleeping calmly behind me um i alluded to it earlier i didn't know you spoke any spanish and that was very impressive to start off our show tonight I speak very little Spanish, so little that I could not comfortably think of how to say that I speak very little Spanish. Yo, hablar. Big, 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 pequeño. Piquito? Pequeño. Pequeño? pequeño. Yeah, see, I never remember. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, I learned that apparently Ashton Miles has a terrible choice in music. And seeing how close those two are in age, I can only imagine what Ashton is playing. That Bryce Jameson would prefer Seth Kasipley take over the Ox. Um, Brad, you seemed like you were desperate to get a random thought, buddy. Share I'm always away. desperate for random thoughts. Uh, my random thought this week is with the heat wave that we are kind of expecting to come, please remember uh, two things. One, if you are going out for a hike, a walk, make sure that you are bringing plenty of water and make sure if you're bringing your pet, that they are well protected, that they are wearing shoes or something to protect their paws because, I mean, at least here in Vegas, it's been 110 a couple of days so far this season. Um, and that's a little hot for someone's paws. Uh, so we make sure we take her at night. Are they your paws? Oh, hers. Thank you. I, I feel like every episode is now just an excuse for you to get your dog on the show. Is this true? I plead the fifth. Plead the fifth. He's been doing a lot of that lately. Um, I got nothing for you. Isn't it great to have a show without Ray? No one mentioned a certain number that falls right between four and six the entire show. Um, for Brad, for Bryce Jameson, for Matt Matthew Betts, uh, I shouldn't assume which one, and of course for producer Andy, my favorite person on this podcast, this has been the Orange and Black Soccer Cast. Enjoy the 10 extra minutes of your day. We are out. <laughs>